Welcome back to another unsolicited and uneducated football analysis with your friend David Valentin. This time to talk about a subject that has to be addressed. Tesho Akindeli. As the fans affectionately call him, the Airbnb king. Tesho Akindeli has been the recipient of unwarranted hate. I don't understand what fans want from him. I don't understand why all the issues with our club have to be embodied by one person. There's a lot of people. I have seen events that the club has hosted where people flat out grab the microphone and say, why is there shocking Dell in this club? And I'm like, I mean, there's there's been some really bad signings in Orlando City history. Tesho Akindele nowhere near comes close to that. And I have to say that there's players that I do not remember fondly. Justin Merrim, to me, is a piece of trash, human waste that uh, will never get any recognition from me other than he was here he was never a lion and he never contributed anything positive to this fan base and this club because he's a lion sack of trash and you know justin you know the invitation is always available for you and i to trade blows that's those are facts right there that's how much i dislike this person but tesho tesho my interactions with him have always been so good. The guy is a family man. He just wants to take care of his kids, take care of his wife, play some ball, invest, make some money, and do good. Let's learn a little bit about this man who, see, I have earned my hate. With what I just said about Justin Merrim, I'm probably going to get, I don't know, 15, 20 tweets about how I need to grow up, how I need to just get over it. Well, you know, um, you don't own my, uh, you don't own my affections. You don't own my emotions. You're not my dad. You don't tell me what to do. I'm a grown man. I think I have earned the ability to say I dislike this person for so and so so reason. People can say that about politicians, and people are like, oh, I can see it. Well, I can say that about uh, athletes, and uh, this piece of trash barely um, meets that criteria but this not th this video is not about him it's about Tesho Akindele the unsung hero so let's talk about a little bit about Tesho Tesho surprisingly is uh, just turned 30 years old this year I am uh, 16 years older than him so it's amazing the guy was born in Calgary Alberta Canada uh, Canadian mom and Nigerian dad and uh, grew up in uh, Colorado Thornton Colorado to be exact and uh, played at North Glen High School uh, he actually turned down an opportunity to join the Colorado Rapids Academy at the age of 16 to focus on academics and my friends this is very normal when you are the son of, of immigrants, you know, you, you have to pursue the degree. And this is something that Tesho has addressed himself about his dad, that education was always at the, at the forefront. And I have to tell you, as someone who comes for nothing, I have discussed this many times on um, podcasts, on different platforms where I have give, been given the opportunity, you know, I, I in Puerto Rico, I was born not in utter poverty, like I probably justifiably uh, say but you know i was i was in i was disadvantaged you know uh all those out of five kids my mom and dad you know my, my dad worked my mom was mostly a stay-at-home mom um so so yeah so i understand the value of education because thanks to education today i have opportunities my kids have opportunities that um that they wouldn't have otherwise even though i record in this crappy couch <laughs> Woo! okay uh to go back to tesho Tesho uh, attended college at the Colorado School of Mines, 
where where he excelled, and uh, he also played some USL PDL with the Real Colorado Foxes. Uh, USL PDL is now known as USL League Two, the fourth division of American football. One of the th important things to remember that people like you know like ignore. Tesho is the 2014 Rookie of the Year. 2014 Rookie of the Year. This is before uh, the 2015 Rookie of the Year. Um, Kyle Aaron from Orlando City. And it's unfortunate that we have deviated away from the, the, the Rookie of the Year award, which uh, uh, Daryl DK would have taken home. Uh, single-handedly uh, you know an injustice if you ask me and he played uh, in Colorado in, I'm sorry in Dallas for four years uh, mostly on the Oscar Pareja with 133 appearances and 24 goals in Orlando he so far has 96 appearances and I believe uh, he already broke the 100th uh, if I'm not mistaken, this obviously I'm reading his Wikipedia page. I don't know. Uh, I, I believe he has already gone over the 100 uh, and, and so far has uh, 17 goals. 17 goals. Uh, obviously, the reason why I'm, I'm talking about Tetris because of what happened uh, last night as I am recording this. And also, uh, Tetris has been with the Canadian national team since 2015. 19 appearances and 3 goals. Canada... A surprise uh, in CONCACAF, a team that has come out of nowhere. And uh, now it's going to their first uh, World Cup since the 1980s. And congrats to the Canadians because they have done it the old-fashioned way by just grinding out wins and getting up there. And right now, arguably, the best um, national team in CONCACAF. Well... This is the thing with uh, Tesho. Tesho last night uh, scored a winner against uh, Charlotte FC in a must-win game for Orlando City to get back into uh, playoff contention. And um, it was a beautiful goal. It was a goal where he did not quit on the play. He gave everything he had, all his effort. Uh, I always say football is a pound of... Uh, talent and an ounce of luck and that luck bless him as the rebound to his shot fell back to him and boom he scored and uh, probably I will have to say one of the most important goals this season so far uh, because a tie or a loss would have doomed this club uh, to quite possibly not make playoffs this year um, I think that because we have the he has the tag of a forward or striker, that people are under the assumption that the guy has to score every single time he touches the pitch, and I have argued that the system, as is on the Oscar Pareja, does not give itself to high scoring. Uh, which is a point of contention with me. I really like Oscar Pareja the person. I think his values, he, his culture, how he approaches everything is just beautiful. But I think that the league has moved away from his style of, of, of football, uh, has progressed, and I think po quite possibly we're wasting a lot of the offensive weapons that we have in the club, but that's a story for another day. Um I just don't understand why people latch on to a particular play and they say, this is the problem. This is the scapegoat. And uh, like I said, it's unjustified. To a person that is smarter than most of us, to a person that is a college graduate, the guy has also a master's in finance, um, the guy uh, is investing wisely. Uh, the guy has has a, a future in real estate. If if you have followed his social media, you see how he is deep into investment, uh, real estate purchases, and things like that. And I think that when it's time to hang his boots, he's gonna have a bright future ahead of him. 
But when it comes to football, he understands his role. He's a journeyman player that comes off the bench and uh, has a fantastic hold of play. The guy defensively, I think, uh, outclasses uh, all our attacking players. And uh, he's a guy that that gives you everything he has, the bet he has, the best he has. And if it's not enough, then it's not enough. But it, he is true to himself. And it takes a lot of testicular force for some fans uh, who get winded uh, going to check their mail on their driveway. Uh, people who have never kicked a ball in their life, uh, who have probably never done exercise since mandatory PE in high school or in the military, uh, people who, you know, have not walked a mile in the shoes of this young man uh, to say, oh, you know, you don't belong here. You're trash. You're taking a spot that should go to somebody else. You should be scoring a ton of goals. They're shocking daily. As a matter of fact, had the most goals in his personal uh, uh, records in his, in his career, um, and I'm gonna tell you here when the, in 2019 under James O'Connor, arguably one of the worst managers to take the reins of this club, ten goals in the season in uh, in 28 appearances. So practically, this guy in a little under half of his appearances, he scored. And you know, if you are interested in knowing uh, his his records, well, he scored three in seventeen appearances in twenty twenty, shortened season, of course. Three in thirty two appearances in twenty twenty one, and he just scored his first on his twentieth appearance this year. Um. And, um, again, I think sometimes we need to understand um, that uh, the effort and the particular skill set of a player might not itself translate into, into, into goals, might not translate into something that we consider worthy because... For the untrained eye, uh, they, people tend to follow where the ball is. And uh, one of the things that I have learned from a lot of um, people that know much, much, much football than me is that you have, to, um, you have to see the whole thing. You have to see the players that are, what players do without the ball, see what players do when they lose it. Uh, see how players uh, position themselves in activities that will distract the, the defense, in activities that will um, offer themselves to be an option for the player that has the ball, uh, disrupt a uh, attacking sequence by the opponent. So, again, we tend to follow the ball, and if it's not the guy scoring or the guy saving or the guy tackling – then, you know, the guy is not worth the time. So um, this video may be a little confusing because I think I'm all over the place. I just I just wanted to say thank you, Tesho, for being you, for what you have done for this club. And uh, if I had to pick a time for you to score, it was definitely last night. So uh, it was unexpected, and I'm still savoring the moment i'm still on the high thank you very much i would like to remind everybody um that i can be found at florida underscore man 76 on uh youtube i'm oh, sorry on twitter and on youtube i am at uh the legendary david which is this channel uh thumbs up a subscription will help me thank you uh, and also, I am with Ladon Prado Orlando live on YouTube. You can go to that channel, subscribe as well. We're live 8.30 uh, p.m. on Mondays. And if you can watch us live, uh, you can uh, watch us the, at your convenience later on. We are on any application where you consume, usually consume your podcast. We are also 
like I said, on the Lado Prado Orlando uh, channel. I'm there with uh, my friend Luis Pineda, my friend um, Paola Medina, and we are, um, you know, talking Orlando City. So if you would like to join us, the invitation is on the table. And uh, thank you for watching this video. I'll see you guys soon.